We want to say that the judiciary exists not for its own sake, but to serve the common person by ensuring the efficient administration of justice and facilitating smooth commercial interactions between the business entities. That is why, for example, reforms in the judiciary have such a positive impact for, for Kenya in the World Bank ease of doing business ranking. There just can't be, in our view, can't be any good reason to impede the work of the judiciary through budget, uh, budget strangulation. In short, we want to inform the public that while we, should, we shall continue doing our best to deliver justice to the Kenyans, judicial services will this year be uh, severely affected as a result of the budget cuts. Welcome back to the program. Of course, if you're just joining us, this is the big story right here on KTN News. That speaking there, of course, is the Chief Justice David Maraga saying that reforms in judiciary has positive impact for Kenya in World Bank's ease of doing business uh, ranking. At the moment, the government has drastically cut the budget of Kenya's judiciary. The question is, how will the judiciary operate uh, moving on forward from uh, these budget cuts. And today, I still have Dr. David Sarfo, I'm um, the CEO of International Center for, of, for evaluation, evaluation and Development, and still at the CBD. We had a technical hitch earlier. We're going to uh, find a solution to that shortly. Is Honorable Anthony Olwatch, who also doubles up as a lawyer, as the Madari Member of Parliament. Now, Dr. David Sarfo, I'm sure you've heard what the Chief Justice had just talked about. He mentioned that there are projects that are being funded uh, by the World Bank. From a development point of view, I would like you to advise us on this. Uh, when governments don't support, you know, institutions like their institutions or, you know, their organizations, for example, the judiciary in our case in point, how will it augur with, you know, foreign organizations or bodies like, like the World Bank in this case? Well, uh, I think that... Uh what African governments are trying to achieve is a point in time where we will be self-sufficient as a continent and we will be able to uh, manage our institutions and our budgets and our activities with, with uh, maybe small or little uh, falling support. But like any other uh, development projects or development institutions is very difficult when uh, donors are requiring maybe a match that you have to come up with a certain, a certain match, whether it's an internal generated or solicited from other sources to supplement what they are bringing in. I have done so many projects where I'm required to match what the other donors are supporting. And I have to come up with ways and means to be able to get the match to support the project. But as I have said, throughout uh, the, 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 the time we are spent here, the first thing that you do in every organization is that, what, what are my goals? And what are the objective that I have to work on in order to be able to achieve that goals? And then when I look at my objectives, I ask myself, what are the outcomes that I'm expecting? And based on the outcomes, you know, I design an intervention strategies, which we call the activities. And then the activities, I look at my resources that I have, and I ask myself, can I use the resources I have to support that activities? If I have resource constraint, where, how do I prioritize some of them that will either enable me to achieve my outcome or do I go back to the drawing board and adjust my outcomes and goals, you know, and be able to operate while I still advocate and solicit and, and, and look for other fundings to supplement what I'm doing. And uh, these are some of the things that institutions, organizations, even countries faces all the time. So my, my biggest concern here is that uh, since I don't have the specifics of these ones, I will be, not be able to directly address it. But I'm looking at it in the context of the challenges that countries, organizations, 
programs either small or big are always facing when it comes to budget cuts. With the situation we have right now in Kenya, Dr. Safo, what will you advise the judiciary perhaps to do? Because what they had demanded for, or what they were asking for, their budget estimate, est estimates once again was 31.2 billion. What they got is about 14.5 billion. And now that they have a very huge deficit, I mean, what kind of an advice will you give them from a, from, from a development point of view? It's, uh, my thinking is that, you know, I, I think the Chief Justice and the people in the judiciary, you know, have been going through these processes, and I think they have already set uh, uh, plans and, and strategies to add that dialogue with the budget allocation institutions or the government in order for them to be able to do that. You know, so I think that the best way to do is to either look at your inputs and say, is it possible for me to be able to work and get the funding that I need to implement my activities? Or look at my outcomes and ask myself, do I have to adjust my outcomes which will affect my activities? So you can look at, I will call it either bottom up or top down. Either you look at it and said, okay, let us see how we can advocate for more resources in order for us to achieve, or how do I cut down on my activities in order for me to achieve the results that I'm looking for. Of Honorable Oluoch back, but I'm going to link up with him shortly. But Dr. David, I really appreciate your input there. But there are people in Kenya who are saying, you know, this is a scheme uh, to, you know, weaken the judiciary. I don't want you to uh, make political statements on this or, you know, give us your observation from political point of view. But at the same time, if an organization used to receive, let's say, certain funding, for example, in Kenya, judiciary used to receive 2.5 billion Kenya shillings that is meant for development. Now they're getting just 50 million Kenya shillings. Perhaps, th is this going to weaken the judiciary, bearing in mind this is one of the independent you know, arms of government? It's very, very uh, uh, difficult situations mm -hmm. for anybody to look at it and be able to predict what is going to happen. You know, from project management perspective, I will ask myself, you know, do I have resource, uh, reserve that I can back on? Or do I, you know, uh, work in a way that will help me to maybe increase my efficiency and effectiveness without actually imparting the results that I'm looking at. So there are so many ways of looking at it. And for me to be able to make a judgment, you know, on any way that it will happen will be very, very difficult without the data and information for me to make an informed decision. Mm -hmm. And in, you know, in terms of you know, the functions of the judiciary, of course, the Chief Justice has already mentioned that we have about 60,000 cases that are still in our courts. They used to have what they call mobile courts. Now, because of the funding uh, problems, they're going to perhaps suspend uh, that. And at the same time, we've talked about you know, the development projects that are still underway in this country, about 70 of them that are going to be stopped. So from your own experience, Will this going to make, or is, it, is, this, is this going to affect the judiciary moving forward in terms of you know, attracting funds from uh, foreign donors, perhaps? You know, from the conversation we have had for the past uh, 30 minutes, you know, the question that maybe as a, from a development perspective I will ask is that, you know, in every uh, government entity or, you know, uh, uh, any organization, you ask yourself, it's not only the judiciary, but also the, the, the people who uh, source the services of the judiciary. So we have to look at it in a broader perspective and look at the various stakeholders that are being implanted by the judiciary system. You know, the, the people, the lawyers who are going there, the people who cases are in, in the court system, the, 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 the legislative arm, you know, that are going on the, the executive arm of the government. So all these people are stakeholders, you know, that the, 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 the work of the judiciary have an impact on. So we have to look at all these stakeholders and see the degree of impact that each one is going to have. And then based on that one, we will be able to, you know, talk about how it is going to affect results. 
Mm. And speaking about results, uh, this is an institution or a body that has received very small amount of cash. Actually, let me now cross over to a member of parliament, Kimani Ishungo, who is now online with me. Honorable Ishungo, welcome to the program. Good evening. The first question that many Kenyans are asking is, what informed this decision to cut, you know, judiciary's budget? I think use of the word cut is not the right definition of what happened because every government agency or state department and every arm of government has a wish list before the budget process begins. And they take that wish list to the National Treasury. The National Treasury and Parliament are able to rationalize that again if the resource envelope that is available. And that is all that happened with the judiciary and all other arms of government. After the cabinet secretary in the executive, they will tell you they never got everything that they wished for. Even the National Assembly, as another arm of government, never got their wish list. If you speak to the speaker who is the chairman of the Parliamentary Service Commission, he will tell you they never got their wish list. Mm -hmm. So everybody didn't get what they expected to get in the last budget. And I think it comes at the backdrop of a very difficult 2017-2018 financial year, which is understandable for everybody in this country. We went through a very long electioneering period. You had to hold two elections that uh, we had to, to, to cater for in terms of expenditure. The revenue shortfalls because of the extended period of electioneering. All these things created a hole that needed to be filled up. Therefore, I've, I've, I've just seen it in the news uh, this evening, what uh, Chief Justice Muraga is saying. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's right to call it that it's a cut that was cut. It's just that the resource ends up closing it up for everybody to get their wish list. Yes, and his explanation, of course, by use of that word cut, is that they had proposed as a judiciary for a budget of about 31.2 billion Kenyan shillings. But what they got is just 14.5 billion Kenyan shillings. So the question is, how would that be best explained? Uh, I told you, Yusuf, uh, I cannot remember the figures for Parliament, uh, but they, they, they got less than, I think, 9 billion shillings of figure, the kind of figures they wanted. The Ministry, for instance, of Industrialization, I remember they lost about uh, 6 billion shillings out of their wish list. And therefore, and being one of the ministries that are driving the, uh, the, the, the big four agendas, the, the, the manufacturing pillar, you'd expect that they would not uh, be in a position to lose. But we had, a, as I explained, we are coming from a, a period where revenues had a shortfall. Uh, everybody uh, wants so much money. That money is not there. Uh, and we are a country with unlimited needs and our resources are limited. So it's, uh, what the National Treasury does is to rationalize and be able to give what they're able to give now. But that doesn't mean uh, budget making is a process. It's not an event. We just concluded the 2018-2019 estimates approval and the appropriations bill um, about a month ago. We have begun the new year only this month. Uh, today's 25. This new year is only 23 days old. And with the handshake in place and with uh, less politicking and people concentrating on work, if KRA put their act together, we are bound to collect more revenue this year and there will be supplementary budgets coming. And that's in, uh, what everybody is operating on, be it parliament, be it the national executive, be it the judiciary. Yes, well, well, well said, Honorable Ichungo. Yeah. One, one final question, one final question. Of course, the Chief Justice is already on record saying that about 70 ongoing projects are going to be affected. From where you sit, do you believe that 50 million KD shillings made for development is enough uh, for judiciary and the people who are connecting this with, with all the back and forth that we've seen between Jubilee and, and, and the judiciary. Is this meant to weaken, weaken the judiciary? Of course, the critics are asking that. Uh, let me tell you, uh, Yusuf, if anybody wants a stronger judiciary and an independent judiciary would be politicians. Politicians are, are the people who are more likely uh, to find themselves with the issues in courts. You remember many of us have just had petitions. Some are still ongoing and therefore need a very strong and independent judiciary. Therefore, the, the legislature could never and can never be party to any attempt to, to, you know, to, to kill the, the, the independence of the judiciary. And therefore, I don't think really anybody, even in the executive, is interested in interfering with the independence about How Parliament, 
Can you hear me? It's speaking about parliament. It's the same parliament that is getting almost 40 billion Kenyan shillings in the same financial year in comparison to 14.5 billion Kenyan shillings that is meant for judiciary. Do you think that is really fair? You've almost tripled I, I, I what, think, what ju think judiciary what got. Is, what, what would be fair is to compare like for like. You cannot say it's 40 against a wish list of what? Look at, look at what parliament requested and what they got. Look at what the judiciary requested. Look at what they got. Look at what each and every government, ministry, department, and agency requested and how much they got. Truth is, fact of life, that not everybody got what they wanted. And I've said with, with the improved political environment, uh, with the country being able to get back on its feet and the economy growing again, we shall be able with subsequent budgets. Uh, at least uh, from my experience, uh, we usually have one or two, at least, at least two supplementary budgets before the end of the financial year. One, no. final, one final question, Honorable Ishungo. How can you best explain, if you can hear me, yep. how can you best explain the increase of, you know, for example, the NIS budget? They've, they've had their budget increase from, about, from 22 billion to 32.7 billion Kenya shillings. I think it's only somebody who doesn't live in this country would ask that kind of question in terms of NIS and the critical role they play with uh, uh, securing our borders. That can, be said, that can be said of judiciary as well, right? No, 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 no. Let me tell you, it's about protecting the lives of Kenyans. NIS has played a critical role, Yusuf, and you remember five years, now, uh, five years ago, we, ca we could not be talking about the, the kind of security we see around the country, most in terms of counter-terrorism. And they've done some critical work, and a lot of the money people, people assume is just going to, to waste at NIS goes to um, intelligence in terms of counter-terrorism, uh, economic intelligence, and a lot of work that goes on in NIS is just not people just sitting and earning salary somewhere. Thank they you, Honorable like, Ishungwa, for your input. I wish we had you in studio. But anyway, thanks for your input there. There is, there is of course, Honorable Ishungwa there speaking to me via way of phone. And, of course, I have been speaking to David, Dr. David Safa Mayu, the CEO of uh, International Center for Evaluation. And, unfortunately, we couldn't link up with uh, Honorable Anthony Watch, who also doubles up as a lawyer because of technical age. Of course, we apologize for that. And that brings us to the end of our program tonight. Many thanks for watching. Of course, you'll be watching The Big Story right on KTN News. Up next is KTN Prime.